<laughs> Guys, can I ask you to move, please? It's now been days, but still... Please, step back. More police arrive on this street. More tape goes up. More investigators go in to search the place Emad al Swalmin had been living in the recent past before he was killed when the bomb he took to a maternity hospital detonated in a taxi. No one knows the exact news. Everyone is suspicious. suspicious. So yeah, at that night, that's quite terrifying. Yes. No, and I completely, I mean, I can't imagine what it was like coming home and seeing all the activity. Um, Here to reassure, they said, okay. the Chief Constable of Merseyside, so, along with the city's yeah, Labour Mayor and Police quick. and Crime Commissioner, Terrifying. they all know what often happens next, when there's an attack of the kind there was in Liverpool at the weekend. That's one of the reasons we've got extra officers out on the street in relation to monitoring those community tensions. I'm really pleased that in the last 24 hours we haven't seen those tension indicators going up, but we absolutely are monitoring it, and that's the reason for the extra staff being out and about. We've not seen any spike in hate crime. There's been no spike in hate crime in the last 24 hours. There are questions too about the background of the 32-year-old who got in a taxi with a homemade bomb on Sunday morning. It's understood he converted to Christianity after moving to Liverpool, that an asylum claim was rejected in 2014 and that there were mental health concerns. Mr Speaker, the House will understand I cannot comment on the details of this case as there is an ongoing live investigation and we are, of course, monitoring it closely. The police have stated that the motivation for this incident is yet to be understood. However, this is a further stark reminder about the threat we all face from terrorism that most of the questions are still without answers won't stop them being asked. And there will need to be an understanding of what happened in the years and months before, whether it should have been seen and how to avoid repeats. I think there's probably a lot more we need to do to really understand radicalisation. Um, I would argue there's a link to what happened with the attack in Plymouth and that individual was radicalised online, albeit around misogyny and, and you know the incel talk that we talk about. So I think it's one of the challenges I think we face at the minute around social media. People need to know that you know things are under control and so you know to put that message out that's good. People have got to be confident that they can try and get back to normal. And yet people now knowing that they had a property in one part of Liverpool yeah. that looks to have been a bomb-making yeah. factory. Four people who were arrested under the Terrorism Act who've been released. Yeah. Well, you know, we've had this across the country. I know people are really shocked because we haven't had something like this in, in Liverpool, but we do have experience of these things across the country and we do have to get back to normal after such an incident. And in the same vein today, an act of unity from faith leaders who came to the hospital in Liverpool to say the life attacks like this aim to stop must go on.